Good morning, second graders uh, at uh, Shades Cahaba Elementary in Homewood, Alabama, and good morning to my friends, all of my friends in Michigan. Uh, first book to, uh, this morning is Frederick by Leo Leone, and notice second graders, it has a silver medal, and that's the silver second place Caldecott uh, winner for the illustrations. So remember that for next year. And the dust cover off, which protects, and I washed my hands, and here we go. Title page, there's Frederick. All along the meadow where the cows grazed and the horses ran, there was an old stone wall. And in that stone wall, not far from the barn and the granary, a chatty family of field mice had their home. But the farmers had moved away, and the barn was abandoned, and the granary stood empty. And since winter was not far off, the little mice began to gather corn and nuts and wheat and straw. They all worked day and night, all except Frederick. Down here, that corner is. Frederick, why don't you work? they asked. Oh, I do work, said Frederick. I gather sun rays for the cold, dark winter days. And when they saw Frederick sitting there, staring at the meadow, they said, And now, Frederick? Oh, I gather colors, answered Frederick simply, for the winter is gray. And once Frederick seemed half asleep. Are you dreaming, Frederick? They asked reproachfully. But Frederick said, Oh no, I am gathering words and will run out of things to say. While the winter's days came, and when the first snow fell, the five little field mice took to their hideout in the stones. In the beginning, there was lots to eat, and the mice told stories of foolish foxes and silly cats. They were a happy family. But little by little, they had nibbled up most of the nuts and berries 
The straw was gone and the corn was only a memory. It was cold in the wall and no one felt like chatting. Then they remembered what Frederick had said about sun rays and colors and words. What about your supply, Frederick, they asked. Close your eyes, said Frederick, as he climbed on a big stone. Now I send you the rays of the sun. Do you feel how their golden glow? And as Frederick spoke of the sun, the four little mice began to feel warmer. Was it Frederick's voice? Was it magic? And how about the colors, Frederick? They asked anxiously. Close your eyes again, Frederick said. And when he told them of the blue periwinkles, the red poppies in the yellow wheat, and the green leaves of the berry bush, they saw the colors as clear as if they had been painted in their minds. And the words, Frederick? Frederick cleared his throat, waited a moment, and then, as if from a stage, he said, <clears throat> Who scatters snowflakes? Who melts the ice? Who spoils the weather? Who makes it nice? Who grows the four-leaf clovers in June? Who dims the daylight? Who lights the moon? Four little field mice who live in the sky. Four little field mice like you and I. One is the spring mouse who turns on the showers. Then comes the summer who paints in the flowers. The fall mouse is next with walnuts and wheat and winter is last with little cold feet. Aren't we lucky the seasons are four? Think of a year with one less or one more. But when Frederick had finished, they all applauded. But Frederick, they said, you are a poet. Frederick blushed, took a bow, and said shyly, I know it. There's Frederick. And for our last for today, here we have Miss Susie, and I read it again for the Shades Cobb children in Homewood and for many up in Michigan also, but there may be many who don't know this story. It's one of the big favorites of second graders and Miss Susie by Miriam Young, pictures by Arnold Lobel. Miss Susie was a little gray squirrel who lived all by herself in the tip-tip top of a tall oak tree. She liked to cook, she liked to clean, and she liked to sing while she worked.
Every morning, Miss Susie made herself a bowl of acorn pudding, and as she stirred it around, she sang, Oh, I love to cook, I love to bake, I guess I'll make an acorn cake. After that, she swept the crumbs from her moss carpet with a little broom she'd made from maple twigs. Then she dusted her firefly lamps and rinsed her acorn cups and put her whole house in order. At night, Miss Susie climbed into her bed and looked through the topmost branches at the sky. She saw a million stars, and the wind blew gently and rocked her to sleep. It was very peaceful. But one day, a band of red squirrels came jumping and chattering to the foot of the tree where Miss Susie lived. They were quarrelsome fellows, and they liked fighting so much, they even fought among themselves. Well, Miss Susie did not see them because she was in her kitchen, and she did not hear them because she was singing. I love my house, oh yes siree, my own little house in my own oak tree. She was just putting her cake in the oven when she looked up and saw a lot of strangers in the doorway. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, six red squirrels. They chased her out of her little house. They broke her broom and threw out all her acorn cups. Then they ate up her whole winter supply of nuts and seeds. Poor Miss Susie. She didn't know where to go. And while she stood wondering what to do, it began to rain. She scampered up the nearest tree. It was a maple standing beside an old, old house. She ran out on a branch and dropped to the roof. The rain came down hard and her fur was all wet. Shivering and cold, Miss Susie scrambled down the chimney of the old, old house and out of a hole in the chimney and into the attic. There in the dusty, quiet attic, she saw a beautiful dollhouse. It was big enough for a whole family of dolls. She knocked at the door. There was no answer, so she peeped in. house, thought Miss Susie. It is fit for a queen, but it needs a good housekeeper, so it's just the place for me. The flowered carpets were covered with dust, and cobwebs clung to the gold chandeliers. There was dust on the black iron stove in the kitchen, and on the little piano in the parlor. There was even 
dust on the china closet in the dining room, and a spider web was on the dishes inside. it is cleaned, it'll be a good place for the winter, said Miss Susie to herself. But what a shame, there is no one to share it with me. It is so big. She cleaned the whole first floor, then she went upstairs and cleaned the bedrooms. Then she climbed into a four-poster bed and fell soundly asleep. The next morning, Miss Susie was hungry, and she left the dollhouse to go looking for nuts or seeds. Well, on her way to the attic window, Miss Susie saw a box. Just the thing to keep my nuts and seeds in, she thought, and she opened it up. Well, what do you think she saw inside? A band of toy soldiers. They had been sleeping there for years. Thank you, thank you for setting us free, said the captain. And now I need a place for us to live. Oh, do come and stay with me, invited Miss Susie. So the toy soldiers marched into the big dollhouse and Miss Susie took care of them like a mother. She cooked their meals in the little kitchen and served them in the dining room. At night, she told them stories and tucked them into the four-poster beds. The soldiers were very happy and most of the time Miss Susie was happy too, but not all. Sometimes she looked at the flowered carpets and the real china dishes and the gold chandelier and she sighed, thinking of her plain moss carpet and her firefly lamps and her acorn cups. One night in spring, instead of telling the sto sto soldiers a story, she told them about her old home in the oak tree. Then she told them how the red squirrels had come and chased her away and a tear rolled down her furry cheek. Late that night, the captain woke his men and gave them their orders. There were only five of them but they were very brave and their hearts were full of love. After all, Miss Susie had cared for them all winter. They marched up the oak tree and climbed its trunk. The red squirrels were, as usual, fighting among themselves. They were making so much noise that they did not hear the soldiers until it was too late.
This is Miss Susie's house, said the captain, drawing his sword. Will you go peaceably, or must we fight? The, world, the red squirrels looked at the soldiers with their shining swords and their brave faces, and one by one they scurried head first down the tree. And don't come back, shouted the captain. Miss Susie was overjoyed when she heard she could move back into the tall oak tree. She thanked the toy soldiers and made them promise to come for dinner once a week. Then the soldiers waved goodbye and marched off through the forest, singing merrily. Miss Susie had to work hard to make her old home as neat and cozy as it had been before. But she didn't mind. She made a new moss carpet and a new broom and gathered fresh acorns for cups and caught two fireflies for her lamps. At last she had everything in order. That night, when she went to bed, she was very tired, but she looked through the branches and she could see a million stars. The wind blew gently and rocked the tree like a cradle. It was very peaceful, and Miss Susie was very happy once more. So there you have it for this school year. Have a happy, safe summer vacation, and I'll see you again in August as third graders. Bye-bye.